So this entry was initially recorded for my personal blog, JustTapTheGlass.com. That's J-U-S-T-T-A-P-T-H-E-G-L-A-S-S.com. And I'm just going to include it in its entirety, in its unedited form. Enjoy. Hello, Just Tap the Glass family. This is another entry in our audio series titled... Floyd, Chauvin, and Race in America. As always, I encourage you to read both the article and listen, because there's a lot of images and words that you're not going to have in the auto version that you can actually see in the article. Now that the verdict has been handed down, a few thoughts as it relates to race relations and the police. First, on the blue wall, you actually see some cracks developing the blue wall. John chapter 3 verse 20 says that for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Exposure to natural light dries up the conditions that allow bacteria to flourish. And that's exactly what we're seeing happening here as a parallel with the police union. Public pressure, however misguided, is leading to important questions that are holding municipal departments accountable. It's very difficult for police unions to sweep criminal malfeasance under the rug, especially if it's a very visible incident. You'd like to see the public do more of this in other areas, but again, as a general population, we tend to struggle with individual critical thinking. Point number two, will more conversations about race lead to significant change? I doubt it. Setting aside the question of what the specific goal is for some of these movements, how often does talk actually lead to change? Intentional, thoughtful action is what gets it done. The Black Lives Matter movement in particular will struggle to produce meaningful positive change for reasons I've outlined in the past, including the inability to get people on their side and a checkered reputation for some of the people they're attempting to exemplify as heroes. Point number three, which is another question. How do we avoid being killed by the police? Well, the easiest answer to that is to just stay out of the line of fire. If you live in an impoverished community, you're much more likely to have interactions with the police. When they're not setting up speed traps to meet monthly quotas, they're patrolling high crime areas where illegal activity is fiercest. The cops have mandates to hit areas where their efforts can register the biggest impact, and that tends to be in areas with clusters of minority communities. Although there have been increased pushes to change that, with rolling back funding for police unions and just defunding the police in general. And unfortunately, that can have a lot of negative unintended consequences for the people that these protest communities are trying to help. Well, think about it on a macro level. Anytime you make an incentive to reduce an activity, that's what you're going to see. If you're asking politicians to start pulling back police force from certain areas, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see less of the police. And despite their errors in judgment and activity, the police still remain the biggest impediment to criminal activity in areas. So if you remove the police, you're usually going to see a rise in criminal activity, which is what you often see and what you've seen in the last year and a half in the Minnesota area and other areas where Some of the anti-police rhetoric has been strongest. But if you're paying attention, you already knew that. That's something to think about in the most vulnerable communities, where per capita income leaves residents least capable of defending themselves when the wolves are at the door. So, how do we avoid fatal encounters with police? Easiest answer to that is just not to resist arrest. You may have been profiled, wrongfully detained. That's fair enough. You're still alive. You'll have a chance to fight your case later. Really, it's up to you when you're stopped by the police whether or not that interaction ends with you going to jail, just a ticket, talking way out of it, or a worse outcome. And let me be clear about what I mean by resisting arrest. If you're yelling at the police, you're attempting to run away, wriggle out of handcuffs, throwing around weapons, etc. These are all things that could get you killed because, you know, by definition, you are resisting arrest. This is common sense, mostly goes without saying among older generations, 
but nowadays certain ideas and standards for behavior have changed so this has to go and be set again overall you just have to be careful with who you're accepting your normative cues from you have to understand that a lot of media influences don't have your best interests at heart they've got their own ulterior motives so you want to keep that in mind before you ever get into activities that could put you in harm's way thanks again for listening folks do send me any feedback you have on the article always like to hear it